In 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright made the world's first sustained, controlled, powered flights. Now the key word in there is control. Those early attempts at flights were mostly uncontrolled. Early airplanes had no more control than this toy. One experimenter, Otto Lilienthal, attempted to control his gliders by shifting his body weight. When he was in the air, he would kick right and left to balance. Other experimenters followed his lead, but it was a dead end. Weight shifting was only good for the smallest of airplanes, but Wilbur and Orville had much, much bigger ideas. The Wright brothers studied birds, including pigeons, to see how they might control an aircraft in the air. They noticed that when a bird flies and turns, it rolls its body. But how do you roll an entire airplane in the air? Well, the answer came from a simple pasteboard box. The story goes, in 1899, Wilbur was tending the bike shop. Customer comes in, asks for an inner tube. Wilbur takes the inner tube out of the box and hands it to the customer. He's sitting there talking to the customer while he's fidgeting with the box. He happens to notice that if he takes the, his thumb and his forefinger of one hand and puts it on these two diagonal corners, and the thumb and the forefinger of the other hand, and puts it on the opposite diagonal corners and squeezes, the box twists. In his mind's eye, Wilbur saw the top and the bottom of the box as the wings of a biplane. With a simple system of cables, he could draw the corners together, turning one set of wing tips up in the wind, the other set of wing tips down. By doing this, he could roll the aircraft in the sky. This was an important, revolutionary new concept. Not only were the Wright brothers the first to figure out that you needed to roll an airplane in order to turn it or balance it, it was an important step towards aerodynamic control, using movable surfaces instead of weight shifting to control the airplane. Once the Wright brothers had discovered wing twisting, or wing warping as they called it, the next step was to take the concept and make it fly. So they built a small glider, a biplane with two wings and a short tail. They flew this glider like a kite, controlling it from the ground and twisting the wings back and forth, just as they had the surfaces of the box. They used four strings for controls, one string attached to each of the forward corners. By pulling on the top right and the bottom left, they could make the kite roll in one direction. And by pulling on the top left and the bottom right, they could make it roll back again. Here's a roll to the left. Notice how I move my hands to control the kite. The strings are attached to the ends of those sticks. By angling the sticks back and forth, I twist the wings of the kite. Now here's a roll back to the right. Oh, and here's a dive. It worked like gangbusters, but it was just a model glider controlled from the ground. The Wright's next big challenge was to build a full-sized, man-carrying flying machine. 